Good morning. Today we are going to learn how to draw a vase of flowers still life. So what you want to do, you want to put your paper going vertical. Let's see if I position my camera right. And we want to look at a vase. Let's see. I have a vase here I want to show you. This is a vase of flowers. Vases are made all differently. The mouth of the vase is a circle. So when we put it down, we only see part of the circle. So let's start with the top of the vase and the middle of the paper. So if your paper is vertically, you make a little dash. Since it's a circle and we only see part of it, let's make it a hot dog oval. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we are going to make the neck two curvy lines, and I'm just going to do a simple oval. I don't want it to touch the bottom, so I'm going to close it in right here. All right, now we're going to do a three-dimensional table by making a line on both sides. This will be the back of the table. Act as if you're going through the middle and continuing on the other side. And then we want to skip a space and make a double line for the front of the table. Because the vase is sitting on the top of the table, we want it to look like it's in the middle. So now you have a vase in the middle of the table. All right, I'm trying to get some more light on me. Okay, now we wanna do the stems and the leaves. So stems can go any which way, they can curve, they can slant, to at least four stems. I'll do them a little darker. Now we wanna do some leaves. Leaves can be a circle, a oval, or a triangle. I like to do a triangle oval. So the oval's at the bottom, and then the um, triangle's at the top. And we can make them go all different ways. You can even overlap them where they're behind something, and another one's Going a different way. So you're filling up this space right here with leaves that are triangle ovals. So I'll have a flower here, 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 and one upside down right here. You can probably, oops, you can always add another one if you have an empty space. So I'm adding one right here. Now it's time for the flowers. So if I want some flowers, my sunflowers that are upside down might just be, maybe this one's dying. So I do some long ovals. You can make points at the bottom. So the, the flower petals are upside down. Whereas this one is kind of standing upright. So I'm doing triangle oval, triangle oval, triangle oval. All right. Now, see, I have one going this way, so I'm, this is going to be overlapping. Overlapping is something in front of something and something behind something. So I'm just going to start doing, let's see, you start with the circle, you know where all your petals come from. All righty, I am adding the flower petals. And then this one's up top. So I did the circle first, long triangle oval petals. They can be overlapping, they can be next to each other. Just remember, sometimes they don't stand up just right, they kind of bend. And sometimes I just do this for the ones you can't see. Alrighty, and then here's one right here. The announcements are going off while I'm talking. So that's okay. All right. So now we have the drawing right there of a vase of sunflowers. And if you have an empty space you want to fill that up, all you do is add in another one. So I might just start drawing this one and then add it in right there. Because you always want to fill in the space. Alrighty. And if you want it to go up high, you can, or you can make the flower petals lay down some. 
I got empty space, so I'm going to make some more leaves. You can even make a leaf lying or falling down. You can make one on the table. All right, so for painting, I have temper paint cakes, paintbrush, I have a cup of water, excuse me, and then I have a paper towel. So whenever I wet the brush, I always wipe it when I take it out. And then I pick the color I want to start with. Um, well, let's say I start with the green. You always want to look on the color well, and you always want to find the shade of color that is lighter than the main color you're using. For now, it's green. So the light color next to green is yellow. So we're going to be using green and yellow for our stems and our leaves. You can go darker to get a darker value shade and think about the color that is darker than green on the color wheel, and that's blue. So first what I'm going to do, I'm going to find all the stems. I'm going to find all the leaves. I'm going to fill them in. Unknown caller. Hello. I get a call while I'm on doing a video. I'm going to fill them in. All right. If you need more water, you go get the, stick your brush in the water. So this will take you a second to do this. I'm going to stop. I'm going to clean out my brush. And I'm going to stir up the yellow because I want to give it a lighter shade. Plus, when the sun is the grass and the trees and the leaves, and you have a little yellow in there. So you can put the yellow wherever you want. You can trace it next to it. Just gives it a colorful look. I didn't get to finish and do a lot. All right, and remember, we can also go to the blue and do the blue. I didn't stir the blue up enough. So the blue will be the darker shade of green. The lighter shade of green will be like a lime green, yellow green, intermediate color. And the blue would be a blue green. Let's see if it comes out. There it is. You can put that wherever you want. And then of course, blue and yellow equal green anyway. So now we have light green, we have dark green. And we have regular medium green. So that gives you a rich color right there. I'm not going to do all the stems and leaves because I think you get the idea. I want to go on to the sunflower. I'm not going to do the background, um, although you can if you really want to. I'm going to do the sunflowers, which are yellow. Uh, this isn't an exact sunflower, uh-oh, <laughs> but it's a fake flower. The color in the middle, it's a darker green. You can make it orange. So I'm gonna try to go ahead and paint. And a lot of times kids draw super duper small and then they get the brush and they're like, oh my gosh, I don't have space to paint because you drew too small. So then they go back and draw bigger. So um, I have to catch the kids from drawing too small. You won't get to enjoy painting. So as fast as I can, paint these sunflowers. It's going to look really nice. Really, really nice. Especially when we add in the lighter and darker value shades of yellow. So let's talk about that. What's the color next to yellow that is darker than yellow? If you're thinking orange, you are correct. And then, of course, um, there's green on the other side. We don't want to go green. We want to go orange. We got enough green with the stems and the leaves. And if you go outside the line, like you see I'm doing, it's okay. Because you can always paint over it. I think I, well, yeah, I didn't finish my stumps and my leaves. So, alrighty. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and wake up the ore. So now I didn't necessarily clean my brush, but I'm stirring it up. Starting it up in the orange. And now I'm going to kind of hit the middle. Easy enough, the middle. All right, so now what I want to do, I want to hit maybe one side of, of and maybe every other petal. And we want it to bleed and make a yellow orange. Um, if it's dry and cool in the room, sometimes it won't do that. So I'm trying to hit every other petal. Even if you go every petal, that's okay too. And if it's the yellow is still wet, it'll blend really, really, really good. All right. So now I'm going to clean off my brush. I'm actually going to go back to the yellow. And be thinking, what color do you want your face? What color do you want your table? It doesn't, like your vase and your table do not need to be the same color as the flowers of the stems, right? So I remember that. Okay, so now I have yellow on my brush. And I hope you're noticing when I touch that orange, it bleeds a little bit. There's where your value shades come in. Remember the vocabulary word value means the lighter and the darker shade of one color. So when it's wet like that and I have all this yellow paint in my brush and what you don't see me doing is I keep going back to the yellow and I keep stirring up more yellow. And then I go and I touch the orange line that I made and it, I touch it and it kind of wakes it up and it bleeds and smears a little bit. So yeah, a little art magic there. Just kind of wake it up and rub your brush near it and it'll be a little yellow orange, dark orange. Um, it'll be dark yellow, yellow orange. Your intermediate colors will come through. And what we want to get is a three-dimensional feel to it. Now, if you want to go and add in some brown, because we know when flowers die, um, they can turn brown sometimes like fruit. So you could go and add some browns in there. You know, um, I'm going to go ahead and wake up the green again paint this leaf over here. So you can just have so much fun painting this. You can add in other colors. Once you get the hang of adding value shades to make it different colors, then you'll, you'll get the idea that, oh, okay, I'm making it, I'm showing where the light is hitting it, where it's light, where it's dark, and that sort of thing. So um, yeah, enjoy that part. Okay, now what color are we gonna do? Oh, I know, I would like to make my vase purple. So I'm gonna wake up the purple by stirring it, stirring it, stirring it, stirring it. So I wanna see a value shade, um, a value scale going from light to medium to dark. So of course, once you start painting it, it's always gonna be a little light. So I'm painting my vase purple. Don't forget to paint the top. That little hot dog oval go in between the stems. Don't forget that. Now, of course, your brush is small, so you're going to run out of what? You're going to run out of paint. So I had to go back and I had to get more paint. So painting in the vase, one shade of purple, and it's light. All right, so if you think about um, purple on the color wheel, then red is next to purple on one side and blue is next to purple. So if I add some red to one side, that would be kind of cool, right? Let's check it out. Let's see. I don't know what side do I want. Maybe I'll go this side. And if it's wet, then it really blends in really, really good. So what we're trying to do when we give a different value shade, a lighter or darker color, we're trying to make something look 3D. So I'm trying to make this vase look um, more round. Okay, now I need to think about what color I want my uh, table. I think I wanna make it a brown. So what I'm gonna do, 
actually going to use a whole bunch of different colors. I'm going to outline these line purple first, kind of scribble some purple on there. I'm, I want to get the orange on there. So when you mix complementary colors together, I don't have brown right now, so I got to make it. So I'm doing purple and yellow are complementary colors. They are across from each other on the color wheel. Any colors, there are three sets of co uh, complementary colors. Any colors that are across from each other on the color wheel, they eventually make brown. You got to just mix them up really good. So it looks like I'm making a little bit of an orange color. So I might have to try a little bit harder. And we know that orange is across from um, blue. So let me wake up my blue. Ooh, there we go. That blue is dark. There we go. All right, it's coming in a little bit. So what I'm doing right now is I'm mixing different colors, lights and darks. I'm giving the vase a chance to dry because I want to go in with the purple again. And I want the purple to actually look a little, um, oh, no color. Oh, I am going to put chalk in the background. If you're like, oh, no, she messed up. I need to put my phone on silent. Okay, so I got some blues in there. Um, now I'm going to put some orange in there. So it's kind of cool when you mix the air. We go that orange and that blue. That's what made my brown. Just did it that quick. Wow, there's the brown. And orange and blue are complementary colors. So, and it kind of looks like a wooden color. Notice I left this a little um, white near it. You can make a shadow right here on this side. You want this to be the darker side. You can put a little shadow right there. Yeah. A little leaf is right there. Alrighty, so my purple should definitely be dry by now. Now I'm gonna wake up the purple again. I'm gonna stir it, stir it, stir it, stir it, stir it, stir it, stir it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of wipe it off. I want a marker brush with it. So I stir, 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 stir in the purple. And then I come back and wipe it. Let's see if I can get me an outline going on here. There's an outline. And if you want to put some like some sideways lines, you can do that. Sideways curve. Show us round. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wake up the blue. Now this blue is gonna be dark. All right, here comes the blue. I want it to bleed. A little bit. So it makes a dark purple. There it goes. It's mixing it. It's making a dark purple, y'all. There we go. So have fun experimenting with color. Try to get you a nice little uh, value scale with colors that are next to each other in the color well. And I would like to get some chalk really quick. I rub the smear and I see orange chalk. Let me grab some chalk real quick. Let's see what I have over here. All right, I found a little bit of light blue that I'm gonna rub right here. And then I'm gonna smear it and it'll cover my little stain when my phone rang. I brush it, <laughs> it's a background. All right, if you wanna add in mixed colors, you can do that. Blue and yellow make green. That's repeating some colors. And it's very, very light. I'm going around. I'm doing the whole background. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. All right. And then we have a vase of sunflowers. All right. Yay. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Yay.